Tiny Tongs. Hi, I'm Thack from Thack Ironworks. Today we are making little pair of tongs. Um, so, this is a medium sized pair of tongs here, and this is one that I specifically made for doing small chain, welding small chain. So, I'm trying to do a finer pair of tongs than my typical stuff. Uh, I'm going to still do it in the style of tongs. Uh, it, the configuration which we will address as we get into it as opposed to the more modern style of pliers which has a jaw configuration which nests very tightly into um, one another there making it flush on the sides there so we're not doing that type trying to do something a little bit more ancient but at the same time I want to make a very small pair of tongs this pair of tongs is actually for my Greek hoplite suit um, if you've been watching those videos, we realize I have my little copper cotter pins and I'm going to need a bit of a toolkit in order to get in and out of that. And I thought rather than using modern needle nose pliers for doing that, I would make up a specific pair. And I'm going to do that right now using half inch square bar. Let's begin. All right, so I'm gonna start with an inch in on the inside edge of the anvil. And I'm hitting with the hammer half on, half off to create my first notch. Okay, so my first notch for the jaw was on the inside edge of the anvil. My second notch will be on the outside edge of the anvil and I'm making a quarter turn counterclockwise right at the junction or where that first notch ends there. So again, I'm hitting with my hammer half on, half off and I'm flattening out the area that will become the eye and I want to bring that down to half the thickness of this bar, a half inch bar, bringing this down to quarter inch here and letting it spread as wide as it can that way. This is going to be our pivot point, our eye if you will. So notch number one was there, notch number two was there, notch number three is another quarter turn counterclockwise and I'm coming out about, I don't know, five eighths from the first two notches there and I'm just putting a step here to create the reins. This is unusual for me. I usually make the tongs out of much heavier stock than this, or like um, usually 5 8 square or 3 quarter square, depending on what they're being used for. So, this is quite delicate from the normal um, size tongs that I work with. But I'm trying to make these as light as possible. If this is something that is carried and you're walking around on foot, you don't want to have extraneous weight. So, I'm trying to make these as light as possible and still be heavy enough to be functional.
Okay, something like that. I just did a decorative end on there. Um, so this will be the one end of the pliers, tongs, whatever we're calling these things here. Um, something that you can put a uh, thong through there to hang it um, if need be. On the other end, what I'm going to do is actually just uh, make kind of a slot screwdriver end, something that you can use to pry into um, these cotter pins. So this is kind of a multi-purpose tool, if you will. Um, you know, heard of the Swiss Army knife. This is the Greek Army tongs. So this is where we're going with that. So I just want to now figure out where I'm cutting off my other piece. Okay, so there we have it. I've drawn out my uh, reins or the handles on these here. Um, gotta let them cool off now and they will now come together. Like that and some final shaping to get it to be our functional pair of tongs. So let's cool off, drill some holes and we'll be back. Okay, so now I want to um, drill my holes here and basically I'm gonna look at these and I'm looking at this one looks a little bit bigger than this one so I'm doing a center mark there but I want to actually put my first center mark on this one and drill it out first because the, once I start playing with it the center might not actually end up center of this one this gives me a little bit more real estate to play with so we'll start with this one I will do a center punch and then off to the drill press All right, so I've got my pieces drilled. I'm just gonna put a rivet in here just to show you. Okay, so things are binding, obviously. So this is where now I look at this here and this here. I need to go to the grinder and just do a little bit of touch up to get these to mate together a little bit nicer. So um, cameraman is not gonna follow me for this, but I'm just gonna go and tickle off a little bit of steel there. Okay, so I've gone in, I'm not sure if you're getting a close up on this, but basically got the flashing out of this area here, rounded this off a little bit and just opened that up so that these pieces can mate in there tightly together. And I believe, if I put the rivet in, still a little bit of binding there. Damn it. Back to the grinder. So went back again, it's still binding a little bit, but that is acceptable there because we can bring that out in post-production when we actually close this rivet here. That is just fine for what I want because I want this to be able to be open here. Anyhow, so now we need to shut the rivet. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a bottom die that sits in my anvil here, so we're gonna have to move over to the vise and close it there. First, I'm gonna heat this entire unit up. All right, this is a little bit awkward since I'm holding my tongs with tongs here. I'm going to do a couple hammer blows to get the rivet to start here, and then come in with my top die, and hopefully Close that down. Ta-da! Okay, there we go. My dies are slightly different sides. I don't have quarter inch dedicated ones, so I've got a slightly smaller head on that side than that side, but all good, looks cool. Uh, back to the anvil, and now we will do the final finishing. Okay, I've got things at an orange sheet here, and what I would like to do before I go any further is put a bit of a bulge immediately there. And then close 
flimsies up that they are where I want them to be. Alright, I gotta heat this up and go back to the vise just to um, move things to center a little bit. Okay, so I just tightened up the rivet again, things have loosened off a little bit now. It's over tight, and what I want to do is my moving it back and forth. It's a little awkward using tongs to do this. Move it back and forth, and then into the water for a second. And I'm just trying to burnish off any irregularities where the two pieces mate together. So you're trying to get as tight a joint as possible, but at the same time you want it to be smooth and precise. Still a little bit stiff. Oh, that's not too bad. So I got a nice solid joint there, but it moves fairly freely, just sticking a little bit there, but I think I'll probably oil the entire thing and then once that's oiled in there, I think it'll move quite nicely. But there we go, there are my uh, Greek army tongs. New historical discovery. That was fun, I like making those. That's a cute little pair of tongs there. Um, but I like the multi-use uh, features at the back there. I haven't made a pair of tongs ever like this. It does show you the process of how to do all other tongs with the three notch process, which we will readdress. We did um, early on in our, uh, in our journey here in the YouTube, we did a couple of um, tong videos, but the production quality was not quite there. So we've been meaning to get back to it and we're going to do some more comprehensive tong videos um, that should have better close-ups and better idea of what you're doing. But this gives you a little sneak peek of what is involved in tong making. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, comments below, thumbs up, you know what you need to do. Um, please subscribe. Uh, we're trying to build our channel and we really appreciate our patrons, Patreon patrons and uh, all that stuff. I will see you next time around. Lots to come. See ya!